But I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I came skipping and jumping when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because I know that one day in his house is better than a thousand elsewhere. And I know that as I come into his house, I morph. I go back never the same and take on a little bit of him. Amen. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I'm making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Verse 7. Those who are victorious will inherit all this. And I'll be their God and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they'll be consigned to the fairy lake or burning sulfur. This is the second death. You turn to your neighbor and then you say, experience a significant shift. Tell them that this is your season to shift. We thank God for what he's doing amongst us. And the Lord has been speaking to us concerning a significant shift. And he's been preparing us for it. I want to encourage each one of us, let's be expectant because the Lord will do what he says he will do. And today, as he speaks, then all that he's said before, please on your way out, the bookshop is opened. Visit CDs, DVDs are available, not just of the series, but loads of series. Those on the internet, you can also call in and place orders. You know, sometimes when we, we hear so many things and we tend to kind of forget them, it's always good to go over it. So the, the previous weeks that we've spoken about the rest, the CDs and DVDs are available. Today we're talking about those who are victorious. And he says that the blessing that he's put in the scripture is for all these people. But he's telling us in verse, he said, those who are victorious. That means to say that if you're not victorious, you cannot inherit it. It means to say, therefore, that all this blessing and the significant shift of the new heaven, the new earth, God dwelling amongst his people, God wiping away the tears, making everything new, understanding that he's the Alpha and Omega, and also giving um, water and, and wine when we spoke about to take it without cost, having it free of charge and having it on top. All these things are available, but it's only available to a certain group of people. And of course, we're hoping and believing that you and I will be a part of it. And those people are the victorious ones. He tells us that to those who are victorious in verse 7, he says, will inherit all this. And I will be their God and they will be my children. And so in essence, remember that we spoke a little bit about, at least we indicated about in covenant, we spoke at length about, you've, you probably heard about covenant, when we talked about dwelling. It's about those that he, habit, well, he, he stays with habitually where he abides habitually. So he's talking about those who are covenanted. Because when he says that they will be my children, that is saying that you are family, you are connected. And so this is for the covenanted one. And it uses the word, in essence, for those of us who are covenanted, victorious. So now, I know that, let me just find out my definition, because you know that you'll probably be disappointed if I don't tell you what victorious means. So this is what it means. Victorious is somebody who's achieved a victory. So, having achieved a victory, the other word I came across is conquering or a conqueror, triumphant or champion, somebody who's a champion. What is victory? Because in case you don't understand victory, then you won't understand victorious and saying that somebody who's achieved a victory. Victory is a success or triumph. Watch this. It's a success or triumph, but it's over an enemy please bear with me, over an enemy in battle or war. 
So if you're victorious, this word that we've had in the significant shift only comes to those who are victorious. In other words, only those who've achieved a victory. But the victory is a triumph or success over an enemy in battle or war. I'm sure you know where I'm going. This life that we're living, I'm sure you agree with me that it is not plain sailing. The graph is not straight. And sometimes it goes up and down. Oftentimes you hear me say that once you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, once you've come to the place where you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you believe that he died, you believe that he was buried, and you believe that he rose again, and you believe that he's seated at the right hand of the Father, forever making intercession for you. You believe that he will come back again. You believe that, uh, that he's the answer and he's the source of all things. You believe that out of him pours the Spirit of God. In him is wisdom and hope and all of that. Once you know and you're on that side, the enemy of the devil becomes your enemy. It means, in essence, that there's a battle line. So, in other words, once you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, it actually does not matter which denomination you are in. Sometimes people get those lines bled and they think that, well, you know, if I'm a Methodist, it's this, or if I'm a that, all these things don't matter. What matters is that we all believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died, was buried, and resurrected. So whatever denomination you're at or you're part of, because some people will say, oh, you know, these people, they believe in uh, the devil, or these ones don't, uh, the demons, these ones don't. Believe you me, once you call on the name of the Lord, the battle lines are drawn. You become, in essence, or you have to become, in essence, a soldier. It means that once you become born again, you are recruited, recruited into the army of the Lord. Remember, Auntie Gladys, do we sing, I'm a soldier? In the army? We don't sing it? Or what's the other one? I can't remember. Something about the army. In the... I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Well, I, look, I was about to sing it, but you people look really mortified, so we'll leave you at that. <laughs> So we sing all these songs in Sunday school. It's not just a song for the children to sing, but it is the truth. We, have, we are in the Lord's army, whether we like it or not. I like Pastor likes to say whether we like it or yes. We don't have a choice. So if we are in the army, if you think about it, anytime a person gets recruited into the army, no matter what happens, the first thing they do, apart from shaving their heads, I don't know why somebody would tell me what, why that is, but once they've shaved their, their heads and they've kitted them with uniform, the very first thing they have to do is they have to train. They have to do their physical, they have to train. They give them harsh training so that they can be fully equipped as a soldier. And in that physical training and that, they do all manner of things. They in the middle of the night wake them up, they do boot camp, boot like whatever. They give them little food. They do all manner of things so that they can be fully trained. So the battle that they have to face, some of them may be in the army 50 years, 60 years, maybe not even fight the battle, but they have to be fully equipped because you don't know when there will be time for war. It could happen any moment, so you must be ever ready as a soldier. And even though it might be peace time or whatever, they still continually train to keep themselves in, in shape. So the one that battle, uh, uh, what do you call it, the trumpet is blown, they pick up and then they move on to wherever. So in a sense, that's how we are as believers. We must always be fully trained. Once we come into Christ, don't let us not let the enemy tell us you don't need to train. Uh, our training, physical, is not physical. You know, the, uh, was, um, what's his name? Paul says a, a physical uh, um, exercise profited little. Yeah, that's, that's for another thing. But your spiritual exercise is extremely important. We need to train. We need to train by prayer. We need to train by word. We need to train by how we relate to one another. We need to train by our giving. We need to train with our mindset. You see, the battle is constant all the time. And the battle comes from everywhere. You know, in the battlefield, it can come from the top. Even in World War uh, II, Second World War, even as far back as there was, they fought the battle in the airways. The pilots and stuff like that. You see, Germany was bombing the United Kingdom like this, willy-nilly. And they go for the, what do you call it, the, the you know, they want to go for Buckingham Palace. They want to go for the heart. And in essence, we are in battle, and I'm sure we're fully aware of it. And here it is again. It says to those who are victorious. 
And so what God wants to remind you and I, we're going to pray, we're going to talk short today and pray and we'll continue next week, is that it's very important that we have a mindset of a soldier. The mindset of a soldier does not give up. A soldier never gives up. A soldier never runs. No matter how fierce the battle is, the enemy could outnumber them 50 to 1, but they will still go ahead anyway. It may look like a lost cause, but they will still advance. The commander will say, okay, troops, let's go. And then when they look in the field, they will see there's so many, my goodness, this is a hundred times more than, but still, as small as the army is, they are trained to die for their country. And God is telling you and I that the only way we can receive all these things is when we're victorious. And so that means we have to fight. But the definition of the f- victorious says that, uh, or victory says, a success or triumph over an enemy in battle or war. So that means that, number one, I hope I've been able to convince us that we don't have a choice in training. We also don't have a choice in the battle. We have to face the battle. Your battle might be different from mine. You might be different from your neighbor. But a battle you must fight as a believer. We have to be strong. We have to be courageous. Because we have to have victory. Now, the definition I love about this is, it is a success or triumph over an enemy in battle or war. What it means to say, this word is for the victorious. I'm expecting somebody to start getting excited. We're soldiers in the army of the Lord. But you know the beautiful thing about us is that even before we step out, we are victorious. Why? Because the captain of our host is God. The captain of our host is Jesus. He is the one, as we remember we started by saying that, who died on the cross and then said, it is finished. And now, where, does it, where is he? He sits at the right hand of the Father, forever making intercession for us. It means that in his resurrected state, he is still victorious. He is still leading the army. When he sits at the right hand of the Father, he's making intercession. That means that he's saying, Father, give them victory. Make room for them. He's telling you and I, go left, go right. He is still the field marshal. Is that the highest one? The field marshal, the ones that sit there in battle plan, and they sit down and they work it all out. They work it all out on paper. And if you like, you and I are walking around with the earpieces in our ears. If we're fully trained, our earpiece will never break down. What happened to your earpieces, folks? And today you don't have them on. So when you see those people, you see the, 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 the security people, and when you see, um, I don't know why it is, but I'm sure, of course, they have it here. But you never see Theresa May when she's around. You see the, the, the bulky man. You don't see that here. But in America, you see them openly, don't you? When the president is around, you see them all looking. They look like men in black, isn't it? They'll all be there at different points. They'll all just be standing there. And then they've got their earpieces in their ear. They're letting you know that we're here. And they communicate with one another. Communicate. And I suspect there's somebody somewhere, obviously, behind some desk. Maybe, because when a, a, a head of state or whatever comes into it, they don't walk like that, you know. If they went in into an environment, maybe especially if it's an open space, all those buildings that you see, they're all sitting there. They sit in advantage, vantage points so that they can see wherever they are. So you just think that they're walking around. Oh, no, man, you're making a big mistake. So the same way, when we step out, wherever we are, whether it's in the air, whether it's underneath, do you understand? Because there's angels all around us taking vantage positions. Pastor told us on Wednesday, he said that whoever has air supremacy has won the battle. Even though the battle may not have ended, if you've got the air covered, you are in charge. Because the ones who are above can see better. And when the, the, the airplane goes high, wherever it is, they can see, just like the eagle, you can see everywhere and they're checking. So the one who's in the air, he's still got his earpiece in there and he's telling you and I, okay, go left, 
Go right, go right, stand here, don't move, because I can see ahead. Remember when, you see when the police are chasing a, a suspect, sometimes they bring the helicopter. And the helicopter would go up par, and the helicopter would, would communicate with those on the ground. And so when you're in that environment, I don't know why people even bother. Maybe that's why, of course, I'm not a professional criminal. I'll just give up. But why, what they have is what we should be. Because even though that's a bad example, what they're doing is that no matter what, they try as much as possible to push themselves. Maybe there'll be an avenue. Maybe there'll be an opening. But the difference between them and us is that we are victorious. The highways, the byways, the heavens, the earth, the underneath the earth, everything is such that you and I will be victorious. And so the battle, let's not be afraid. We have to fight the battle. We don't have a choice. We have to train. We don't have a choice. Nobody who's joined the army will tell you that their training was easy. They would be lying. If you go to the army recruit, if you're thinking of going to the army, you know sometimes you see them on the, on the TV, they do adverts, Royal Navy, and this and this. I watch it and I'm like, hmm. You see how nice they present it. But no matter how lovely they present it, when you go to that recruit, I'm sure if you ask them, is there they will never tell you the training is good. But they will tell you, you can do it. Everybody's been able to, you can also do that training. So the training is not sweet. That everyday praying is not sweet. Sometimes waking up in the middle of the night to pray is not sweet. 12 hour, it's not sweet. You want to go to party or whatever, but you have to come to church. Why do I have to? I, I'm part of a ministry. I, why can't I do? Why do I always have to? It's not sweet. But know that in the end, you're going to look and triumph in your force. We have to understand, get this right, that training we must. Sometimes you know you've, you've put your money aside. That this money, I'm going to, I've already gone on the internet. I have seen that sofa. Yeah, sofa. I've seen it. I'm talking to somebody. You've put it in the basket already. I can see it. It's a brown color. And you have calculated yourself that you are going to, this time you, this is when you're going to go and pay for it. But the Lord is saying... I want that sofa money. The cup fits. Whoever let him wear it. He's saying he wants the sofa money. Isn't God gracious? Because he's not told me who you are. <laughs> don't worry. Don't be hot. Don't worry. I don't know who he is. You just, <laughs> you're just leaving it to you. But he wants that sofa money. It's hard. It's difficult. Just like that soldier. But no one understands that. The only way you can inherit is when you are victorious. You are success or triumph over an enemy in battle or war. When you give that sofa money, you have succeeded. You have triumphed over the enemy. Hallelujah. The battle is real. It's fierce. It's raging. But know that in the end, God has given you the victory. So therefore, if you are victorious you will inherit it. It's very important that our mindset is stayed on God. He said, I'll grant perfect peace for those whose minds are stayed on me. He says, if you are victorious, you will inherit all of this and I'll be their God and they will be my children. Covenant. A covenant with those who put themselves out for me. The significant shift comes to those who shift with me. The, the, the ones who will stand and in in, in, in face the enemy. The ones that will say, if I die, I die. We love the scripture, don't we? I love that bit in Esther. After Mordecai says to him, how do you know that you've come into the kingdom at such a time as this? How do you know? And that's the same question you and I ought to ask. It can never be a coincidence that we are born at this time, whatever time we were born. It can never be a coincidence that we're living at this time, the people that live in the 1800s, 1700s. Why are we now living now? But as we are living now, it can never be a coincidence. Whatever it is that God is asking you and I to do, it is not a coincidence. 
Whatever environment we find ourselves in, however we were born, however we were grown, don't worry about it, don't cry about it because God knows what he's doing. But as we face this battle, no one understands that God is relying on you and I. But we also understand and position ourselves. He's looking for the victorious ones. That is when he can covenant properly. That is when everything can come to us. We ought to understand that when we face the enemy, we will win. But he's looking for those of us who will be like Esther. Esther says, well, and in those days, you've probably heard it before, you cannot approach the king anyhow. You can't make it. Even now, you can't go to the, first of all, you can't go to the, the you can't, there's no access. You can't do it. And if you were able to bulldoze your way, if the king does not allow you, if his scepter is not up, I think, if it's not up, you will be killed for sure. You will be mincemeat, or not, your head will be chopped off. I mean, they chop the head off, and then what they do is that they don't just chop the head. Once they chop the head, they hang the head in the public square. That's what they would do. And then they hang it for all to see that this person was disobedient. And if you are disobedient, that's what happens to your head. And they allow the birds of the air to eat you. That's what they do. But here's Esther, as God required of her, to approach the king. She does not know, folks, whether the king is going to say this or that. She doesn't. But she says, well, I'm going to go to the king. If I perish... I perish. That's the mindset of a soldier. That the battle is raging. I'm going anyway. If I die, I die. That's the mindset of a warrior. And on Wednesday, pastors made a declaration here. Something that those of us who come to morning service will be doing a lot, especially at 6 a.m. That there's a warrior spirit. Anybody here on Wednesday? And it's extremely important, Freedom Center International, we ought to see God while he might be found, because we don't know tomorrow. But today, he's released an unction for a warrior spirit. And the warrior spirit are those that are victorious. The warrior spirit, the warrior does not care what is facing him. Whether it's 10 times, 20 times, one time, they don't care. They just go like a British bulldog, they are not intimidated. And we ought to position ourselves in it. It's hard. Sometimes we shake. Sometimes we are not sure. But the warrior trains themselves. And so we're praying for God's spirit. For those who are victorious are the ones that will inherit it. You say to yourself, God, I need a warrior spirit. Because if we can't have a warrior spirit, we cannot inherit all of this. If we don't have a warrior spirit, we cannot win that battle. The warrior set self, even though it's not happened, imagining himself after the battle, the warrior is like a boxing champion. I don't know, there was a big fight yesterday, I don't know, or yesterday, today, I don't know what happened. But whoever, or oh, is it happened? There's, I hear there was, who, who won? You bank and somebody. It's not happened, or it's next week, whenever. But I heard on the news, I saw them sparring, and they were saying that they're going to box. Both of them are claiming victory, even though they've not boxed yet. The other one says, I'm going to win the belt. This one, this one. I remember when I was a, a, a few years ago, there was this um, guy that, from Ghana coming to box. At that time, Barry McGuigan. Anybody remember it? And before he was talking, he said, I'm going to get her. She said, she. <laughs> See, she said, she. In other words, what he was saying is that he's not up to my standard. There's disparity. I, I don't remember if he won the order, but I mean, he was talking big. Now, that before the boxing guy has stepped into the thing, he psyched himself up. Imagine himself with that champion belt. But you and I, that's the attitude we ought to have. The difference between the one that sacks himself and loses, and you and I, is that no matter what, we win. Forever we win. 
forever we are victorious, no matter what. But what all God requires of us is to align ourselves, to be like Esther and say, you know what, if I perish, I perish. But the warrior spirit has been released because we need the spirit. If we can't have that spirit, we won't start thinking like that. So today we're going to rise together and we're going to pray together. If you're praying for me, pray for me that I'll have a warrior mindset. That no matter how uh, 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 small I look or no matter how big the enemy seems, that I can project myself beyond Goliath and say that, I can bring you down. And that's what you and I need. It's that to those who are victorious, they will inherit all of this. So wherever you are, lift up your voice in prayer, and we're going to release that warrior spirit in this house. While you're praying, take an opportunity to pray for your children. You know, we, it's very important that, you know, the Bible said that, you know, in the beginning, uh, Adam and Eve, everybody gave birth after their kind. Look at the physicality. Anybody I know who's a soldier's son or daughter in physical, they are very disciplined. Because their father or mother, whoever was a soldier, raised them like they were mini soldiers. You ha we have to take after our kind. It's my prayer that we will raise our children, no matter how young they are, no matter how old they are, it's never too late, that we raise them as warriors. That battles might be fierce, but they need to understand that they ought to fight and not give up, that they will not faint, they will not hang their heads down or their hands limp. Our mission is raising overcomers, setting the captives free. Freedom Center International is here to support you in every step that you take with the Word of God as you seek spiritual and emotional wholeness. And we hope you've been blessed by today's message. Worship with us at 38 Upper Wickham Lane, Welling, Kent, DA16 3HF or give us a call on 0207 You can also visit us online at fcichapel.org And remember, there is progress in freedom.